Hi, it's Jake, back from my third video. This time around, the topic was chosen by you. By popular demand, I will be looking at the Cessna 172 electric system. There is one main component to talk about when discussing the electrical system. Everything electrical either starts at, is controlled by, or passes through the junction box, or jade box, as a lot of people call it. During Mr. Wilson's Aero 100 course, he talks about relays. We in maintenance call them contactors. In the automotive world, they call them solenoids. They are all the same thing. Since Mr. Wilson made you familiar with the word relay, I will use that word. There are four relays in the junction box. So what are these magic relays? Picture in your mind a big T made of copper. Under the T is a spring pushing it up. We wrap wires around the base of the T, and then when we pass a small amount of electricity through those wires, the wires will then turn into an electromagnet that pulls the T down against the spring. This makes the two arms of the T touch large copper contacts. One contact is attached to the battery, and the other contact is connected to all the things that come on with something like the battery master switch. In this way, we can use a small amount of electricity to control a large amount of electricity. The reason we go to all this trouble is because we don't want big, heavy wires to go to all the dash switches. There are two reasons for this. The main reason is safety. Can you imagine if you were turning the metal key to start the airplane and something went wrong inside the switch and all that electricity went through your hand? Ouch! Much better to have a small amount of electricity go through the switch and have something go wrong. The other reason is weight. The less heavy wiring you need, the lighter the airplane. I grabbed an old relay out of our quarantine cabinet and cut the top off of it. Inside you will find the copper T I was talking about with the spring that raises it back up and inside the base you can see that two small contacts on the front are connected to the electromagnet inside. Here it is with the T and spring back in place. Next, I thought I would have some fun and hook it up to an aircraft battery to watch it work. I forgot that without a top on it, the spring would launch the T. How much fun am I having making these videos? Mr. Carlick told me that I needed to explain the contactors because students don't get enough contact with them. You can tell he's a dad by his dad jokes. Okay, so now we know all about the contactors. I mean solenoids. I mean relays. Let's get back to the junction box. When we open it up, we see the four relays. There is one for the battery, one for the starter, one to control the power coming from the alternator, and finally one for the external power or ground power plug. The ground power plug is the, is the only part of all of this that you can see with the cowl on. On the round dials, you need a screwdriver to open the access door, but on the G1000s, they use a finger latch. When you look at the ground power plug, you will notice two big pins to transfer a huge amount of power to the battery, and a much smaller, shorter pin that will supply a much smaller amount of energy to an external power relay that will connect the big positive pins to the battery. In the junction box, you will also find a current sensor that supplies the ammeter with a signal. You will find the alternator control unit, or ACU, that tells the alternator how much power to make to recharge the battery and run all the systems. You will also find a fuse to keep the clock alive all the time so it always knows what time it is. And in the top right corner, you will see the main breakers for the two main buses. These breakers can't be accessed and in flight, but instead are heat resettable. If they blow or open up due to a short, they will stay open until they cool, and then will reset themselves. They will continue to open and close until you have eliminated the faulty component by turning it off. 
These main breakers supply the two main buses and then the two main buses supply the two avionics buses. The main buses both come on with the master switch and are not individually controllable. The avionics buses are separately controllable with the two halves of the avionics master switch. In the round dial 172s, what comes on with each half of the avionics switch? Okay, so let's turn on the master. And we're going to turn on bus 1 of the avionics master. And we're going to wait and see what turns on. You notice the only thing coming on is the Garmin 750. Uh, the audio panel is not. Uh, the interesting part about this is in most airplanes in the world, uh, COM1, which our GTN 750 is, um, is wired directly to the uh, mic and headset uh, jacks in the airplane. So you don't need the audio panel for COM1 to work. What else does the GTN 750 do for us? Well, it gives us um, GPS navigation and VOR ILS navigation. So it gives us a way to talk to the outside world and it gives us two different ways to navigate. Okay, let's go back to our master, our avionics master, turn off bus one and turn on bus two. You'll hear right away that the avionics cooling fan comes on and the main reason for that is there's more stuff coming on. You notice that the audio panel at the top is all lit up, that the COM2 is uh, on and the ADF is on. So what's this do for us? Well, we got our audio panel back, which allows us to talk to each other, but more importantly, it's necessary for uh, COM2 to be able to talk to the outside world. On the other half of the COM radio is your NAV radio. That lets, allows you to navigate by uh, VOR and ILS. And down at the bottom, you'll see that the ADF is lit up, allowing us to navigate by uh, ADF. So if we only have uh, avionics bus 2, we'll still be able to talk to the outside world on COM2, be able to navigate by both VOR and ILS, and also ADF, so two different ways. So whether we have uh, only bus 1, we have a way to communicate and two different ways to navigate, and if we have only bus 2, we have a way to communicate and two different ways to navigate. This was not an accident. It was very much done on purpose, um, both by Cessna and by the person who's redone our panel for us. Okay, so that brings another video to an end. Uh, this is a fairly short one, but I hope it answered a few pressing questions. Of course, this was an answer to uh, requests for what people wanted to know. Uh, I'm more than happy to take any criticism on this video, anything you want added, anything you want taken away, and what you'd like for the next topic. So by all means, please give me some feedback, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks.